In this week's session, we're going to take a look at the top new features that you need to be aware of in Microsoft 365 as an admin. Stay tuned, you're going to learn something. Greetings everyone, welcome back to the channel, Andy Malone, Microsoft MVP. In this week's episode, I thought we'd take a quick look at some of the new core features that are changing in Microsoft 365. It seems that this platform is changing almost on a weekly basis and it's super important that you keep your skills up to date. Some of these features are now coming into public preview and they're super useful. So we're gonna spend a little bit of time going through some uh, of these new features. Now, I'm going to time code this session, so feel free to jump in uh, and jump out. And of course, if you enjoy the session, bump the like button up there. It really does uh, make a difference to my channel. And if you've not subscribed, then we would love to have you on board. So bump the subscribe button, ring the bell, and come and join uh, our great learning community here. And questions and comments uh, for this, or in fact, any of my other sessions, of course, just get them down below. So I think without any further ado, let's jump in, take a look at some of these cool features, and I think you'll learn something in this session. Enjoy. So the first of the new features you can find in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, and this is the new Marketplace in 365. This is your one-stop shop to come and find all the latest business applications. And in here, you can see that you can try and many of these for free. Some of them, of course, do carry additional charges. Now, in addition, you can also view, as well as the kind of recommended products, you can also do, this is where you can add on to the likes of Microsoft 365. So if you want to bring in additional features, this used to be buried away in the settings. So it's kind of nice to see it in here. Um, as what well, you just get a selection here but of course you can also search now in terms of apps this comes into the settings page and if I go into the integrated apps page you can now see that we now have the integrated app store here in Microsoft 365 and you have a fair selection of line of business applications here that you can bring in again some of these are free but some of them are also require additional licenses and of course there are additional apps that you can buy in both the Azure Active Directory so these are your enterprise line of business cloud apps you can also get shared uh, sorry, SharePoint apps Teams apps and of course the add-ins for for the likes of Microsoft Office and the various uh, products there as well. So I can just simply come down, I can uh, locate a particular app here and, and I can click into this and it gives me some details about the app. Um, is it available? I can also specify, do I want to allow this app to be assigned to uh, particular users or groups? Uh, do I want to deploy this for my uh, organization? So am I going to uh, say this is a test deployment? So again, we have the test deployment here. And again, I can click on update. Now, any apps that you uh, push out will, of course, uh, appear here in the apps pane, or as I like to call it, the waffle. So simply for this, I simply click on uh, additional apps and if I scroll down here you can see any additional apps that have been pushed out in Azure Active Directory or indeed uh, Microsoft 365 will also appear here. Now a common question is Andy uh, can I control the apps? Of course you can here you can say who can get access to the apps and so on but also do remember that you can control apps on a per user basis as well. So for this you simply go into a user account go into the user and you will have app, uh, licenses and apps in here it will show you the licenses that you currently have for all of the products and again down here we'll have a list of the apps and if I scroll down here you can see if I scroll down and if I say hey you know I don't want a user to receive a particular app I can just simply remove that checkbox and that app will be removed so again quite a useful tip 
So up next, I'm coming into Microsoft Purview, and it seems that the number of changes in Microsoft Purview never ceases to amaze me. So you'll be familiar if I go down here into Data Lifecycle Management and into Microsoft 365. Recently, we've had something called Adaptive Scopes, and Adaptive Scopes is a fantastic tool. Uh, I like to refer to it as ABAC, or Attribute-Based Access Control. So this has actually just recently been moved. And if you scroll up to the top here, you can see it's now under uh, policies or roles and scopes, as I'd say. So um, I'm going to come into adaptive scopes here and you can create uh, scopes for any number of reasons. So this week I'm in Norway. So I'm going to call this my Norway scope. And my Norway scope, I can put in a little bit of description here, and it says, okay, what do you want to create? So essentially what I'm doing here is I can create a scope, and then when I assign permissions or policies or labels, I essentially label it to the scope rather than into the individual items. And this makes it very fluid and very dynamic. So you can set this on per users, per SharePoint sites, and even Microsoft 365 groups. So um, let's say, for example, I want to do this against a Microsoft 365 group. Well, now you can see it says, okay, which attribute is equal to or contains with or starts with and so on. And again, you can do the same thing. And depending on which site you connect to, you can see that you choose, you can choose um, obviously your own customized uh, options and you can customize these you can put in the site name or you can even do the rule by the site URL and of course users I can then add individual users so I can say rather than picking uh, users one by one I could say basically all users uh, if their city is equal to, let's say, for example, Oslo. So if anybody in Oslo will automatically be added to the uh, scope here. So I'm going to go with that. And so if I click on next, I'm going to click on to submit. So now when I click on done, what I'm now going to do is let's say I'll pop back down into lifecycle management and I can create a label here or even let's say a retention policy itself. So this is my Norway policy. Uh, I'm going to call this my Norway one year policy and I'll click on uh, instead of uh, static. So step by step. I'm going to choose this adaptive option here and now I simply add in my scope and of course I've got two scopes here and the one I've just created is the Norway scope. So remember anyone in the city of Oslo this will basically pick up. So at uh, the moment by default it's choosing exchange mailboxes and any OneDrive accounts. Of course you can also add in uh, th for example things like Teams chats um, again, depending on your license, some of these features may require premium uh, features as well. Um, I'm just going to go with OneDrive and Exchange Mailboxes at the moment. And if I click on to next, I'm going to say, how long do you want to retain the items for? Well, I want to retain them for, let's say, a custom period. And I'm going to choose uh, simply, let's do uh, one year. And of course, at the end of the one year, uh, period. Um, I can say, do I want to do nothing? Do I want to delete the items? Um, you can even retain or retain the items forever. So this is almost like placing the item on uh, legal hold. So when do I want to start the retention period when the item was created or where it was last modified? So for example, uh, I'm going to choose when the item was created. So one year from today, the item will be deleted well, actually, that deletion process, it goes into a first stage recycle bin for 30 days and then a second stage recycle bin for 63 days for a total of 93 days. And then it's purged. So I'm going to click on next. I'm going to click on submit. And there you have it. That's how I created a retention policy and I've assigned it to a adaptive scope. 
So the benefit of adaptive scopes doesn't just stop there. So in Microsoft Purview, I can also use this technology um, in the newly extended features in communications compliance. Now, if you've never used communications compliance, um, it is absolutely superb. So we live in a politically correct world and we have to avoid the situation where we have inappropriate communications, whether it be threatening messages, whether it be text, whether it be inappropriate images being sent across the wire. But there's a whole bunch of different reasons and different types of policies that you can do. Now, of course, you can assign these policies to individual users, um, but uh, where it's really powerful and really useful is that you can also create different policies for different situations and take advantage of those adaptive policies. So not only can I detect inappropriate text or images, but I can also detect the inappropriate sharing of sensitive information types or maybe financial regu regular irregularities, I should say. Um, things like a conflict of interest. And of course, you can also create your own custom policy as well. So to, to be honest, however, it doesn't really matter which option you choose here um, because the nice thing about this is you can actually go ahead and customize it. So you can see here, I can set this for all users or specific users. Um, I can also customize the policy if I want to. So if I choose to customize this policy, I now get the additional option of selecting adaptive scopes. So rather than fixed sets of users or fixed sets of groups, where this is really useful is if the group moves or changes department, it will pick them up either or. So I'm going to click on add scopes and I'm going to choose our Norway scope, which of course is looking at all our users in the, in the city of Oslo. So now I can say, do you want to exclude any particular groups here? Do you want to ha add in a reviewer? So uh, for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to add in myself. But of course, in reality, this may be somebody in HR, maybe somebody in uh, uh, compliance or something like that. So I'm going to click on next and what do we want to monitor? So we can monitor all communications in Exchange, in Teams, in Yammer, of course, and I'm going to click on next. Oh, by the way, just a quick thing. You can also monitor um, non-Microsoft apps as well. And for that, let me just click in here. You can see that we have this data connectors. So any connectors that you've added in here, you can also add in uh, to that comp uh, communications compliance and it will monitor those as well. Please note, however, there are maybe costs involved with this. So you maybe want to check that out first. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click on next and you can see, do I want to monitor inbound, outbound, or maybe just internal traffic? Um, of course, I can also, this is where I can control my uh, the content. So I, I can add in uh, classifiers. I can look at the moment for things like targeted harassment, threats, any kind of discrimination. But of course, I can also add in additional things as well. So things like profanity. I could even bring in things like um, uh, uh, any inappropriate images. Um, although gory images, you might want to watch out for that if you're in a uh, obviously a medical <laughs> environment. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and click on next. And there we go. So now I've gone ahead. I've now created uh, my policy using an adaptive scope. So this is really super uh, useful. So of course, one of the controversial components of communications compliance is that your employees would definitely need to know about this feature and the fact that they're being monitored. So again, you may want to take just a little bit of legal advice about that. But there we go, communications compliance. Now, finally, this one I really like. One of the big issues that we've typically had for years, actually, are users using local admin passwords, either to add domain joined machines or indeed standalone machines. And of course, 
This has had real problems with things like traditional pass the hash attacks. So what we have here is this is Azure AD support for local admin passwords. Uh, and what we do here is that they once you've enabled it, it essentially means that those passwords will be backed up in Azure Active Directory. They'll also be uh, encrypted. So this prevents that pass the hash attack. It also means that you'll be able to recover the local admin password should something go horribly wrong. So this is a really, really nice solution. So to have a quick look at this, I'm gonna come into Microsoft Entra. I'm going to extend Azure Active Directory and I'm gonna come into Devices. And in Devices here, I'm gonna click on Device Settings. So first of all, what we can see here is if I just scroll down, is that we can see local admin settings, and this is currently in preview. So first of all, enable Azure AD local administrator re recovery. So here we can enable Azure AD admins password solution or laps, and you can go ahead and I can switch this on. Now, other things that you might want to also add here is a restriction that prevents users from recovering BitLocker keys for their own devices. So again, do you, if you want to kind of override that, you've got that option here as well. So I'm just gonna click on save. Now, essentially that's now managed or registered in Intune. And I'm gonna cover this in a very, and I'm gonna cover this in a future session actually. So for now, I can click on manage admins here. And you can also, this is where, of course, you can assign device administrators. So you can either add an assignment, and those assignments can either be based on the user, a guest account, of course, if it's a business partner, a service principal, and also a group here as well. So I can go ahead and I can add in an assignment here. So in this case, I've got a user here called Adele. I'm gonna click onto Adele and I'm gonna Adele, add Adele in and she is now a device admin. So uh, as I say, the LAPS service in Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Entra is particularly useful. So once you've added in admins, of course, um, they will then appear here. Um, and again, this is gonna be the recovery console for that. And I'm gonna cover this in a future session. So for the moment, definitely take a look at this article. Very interesting, Windows Local Admin Password Solution in Azure AD. This will really save you an awful lot of grief. And there's a complete step-by-step -step guide on how it works. Fantastic. So there you have it, just some of the new features for admins coming into Microsoft 365. Hey, listen, I really hope that you found that useful. And if you did, bump the like button. It really does make a difference to my channel. And of course, if you're not subscribed, then hey, come on on board. Come and join our great community. It's great to have you. And questions, comments, of course, get those down below. And I look forward to reading them. That's it for today. I will see you next time. Thanks so much for joining me. You take care. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.